With this video, we begin our exploration of the topic of files and how we can use them in Scala. Now, up until this point, our usage of files has kind of been limited to I.O. redirection. And we learned about I.O. redirection early on when we saw that we can use less than and greater than to basically take the contents of a file as input or to print to the contents of a file. And we can write a simple little program that demonstrates how I.O. redirection can work. We'll call it redirect.scala. And all that I want to do is I want to read in, I don't know, say five numbers and take their average. So we'll put in our import statement and val nums equals array dot fill of five of read in. This isn't anything too complex. We just want to demonstrate how we could use the redirection for you know, whatever it is that we're doing so that we can also see what the limitations are. So I want to print line nums dot sum divided by nums dot length. Okay, simple calculation of an average. Actually, let's what, convert one of these to double so that we get kind of a proper average instead of just the integer division. Now, with the input redirection, what I can do is I can make a file called 5nums.txt and I can enter five numbers inside of there and I can run my redirect with 5nums as the input and it will print out the average of those numbers. Okay, so the advantage here is I was able to read from a file. Okay. Also in the area of testing, I could have created a five nums A, B, C, D. I could have created several versions that would allow me to very quickly go through and verify that they do what they're supposed to do. The downside of this though is if I wanted to ask the user something, so ask the user is there a number you want to search for? And then we're supposed to print out the location of that number. That doesn't work. Because by doing the input redirection, we made it so that all input comes from this file. And so it gets a little bit weird to try to read some things from the file and some from the keyboard, given what we've known. The same thing goes for the redirecting the output. If I use the greater than and say I want the output to not go to screen but go to that file, we get our 4.6 out in the file. Here again though, if I had wanted to ask the user anything, everything that I print is going to go to this file. Okay, so I'm not, the user's not going to be able to see it. Even if I didn't do the input redirection, I can't prompt the user because all of the output is going to go to this file. So redirecting I.O is a little bit limiting. It was able to get us through a, a fair while, but it would be nice if we could really interact with the files directly. Indeed, interacting with files is probably one of the more significant things that you do in programs. The sample example that I generally give to uh, students is imagine a program like Microsoft Word without file access. And well, without the file access, you wouldn't have the ability to save anything that you wrote. So You'd leave the program open and hope it never crashes or your computer goes down because as soon as the program terminates for any reason, everything would be lost. The purpose of the files is to give you a place that you can save information or store information in between runs. And so it turns out that a lot of the programs that you use take advantage of this and you probably wouldn't be willing to spend any money on many of the programs that, that you use if they didn't have that capability. If they didn't have the ability to save and load from file, they would be uh, much, much less useful than they are. We want our programs to be useful, and so we're gonna learn how we can do file input and file output beyond just doing the redirection of files from the command line. 